Hello my soccer universe, we have a quarterfinal lineup, not quite yet the matches because the draw is happening tomorrow but we know the teams that are in the quarterfinals and I think that's probably the most exciting thing coming out of this Champions League week because let's be honest all the matches were not that exciting and even the one where it was really tight it was not an exciting match because it ended with a nil nil draw. Um, I made some myself some, something a bit more exciting. I was about to not have uh, this wall with shirts. Then I realized, well, the teams in there don't, don't really fit with Champ Champions League. And so let's put up the four favorites. And I realized I have of the four favorites, I have all dark blue jerseys. So we have all dark blue here on the side. I'm quite pleased with that one, but you know, that's for me. Uh, what can we say about what happened? You know, uh, Tuesday we really thought that there may be some excitement and to, to be honest, the Porto Inter game lived more or less off that excitement, although the game itself was not that great with Porto waking up too late. Inter seeing it out a little bit like Milan, uh, very easy. However, we forget that Milan actually had chances to win that game where Inter more or less held back and had uh, Porto come at them. Uh, City, yeah, <laughs> rolling Holland scoring five, running completely riot over Leipzig, and that, what what is it with Bundesliga teams uh, losing heavily to Pep Guardiola teams, um, like Leverkusen did back in the day when Leon Messi scored five goals in the Champions League round. So yeah, uh, that that was one that I didn't see coming on the other side. I. I think I can a little bit understand because at halftime the game was done. Leipzig were not up for it any, anymore. Concentrate on, on the Bundesliga, get out of there. Surely you cannot lose by seven. Yesterday evening, um, already, although I thought that uh, on the outset, before, uh, after the road, these are two really exciting ties. Given the first legs, it was not exciting. We had Napoli already uh, booking more or less the place with 2 0 away win to Frankfurt. They doubled up Osimen, uh showing his athletic prowess. And I think he, we're going to hear about this guy a whole lot more. He's going to be a star in the Euro, in, in the European game. The Real Madrid Liverpool well, was also, also not that great. Um, but before we go into the games, there, were, there was one big story. And unfortunately, not a Paul positive one surrounding the Napoli Frankfurt game, which has to be addressed, where... I think the politicians didn't help. Uh, it was based on the clashes that happened in Frankfurt between the two fan groups. And for that, you gotta know that Frankfurt is twinned with um, Atalanta. So that makes them already go against Napoli for sure. And I think there were Red Star fans also involved in there somewhere, you know. Um, I actually would like to have a, di a diagram of, of fan bases and ultra groups that are twinned kind of, kind of to really foresee this a little, a little bit more. I, I knew about the Frankfurt Atalanta group, but I didn't think it will escalate that, that, that much. So there were already some scuffles in Frankfurt um, with Italians and the German fans. That's how it's portrayed in the media. As I said, there might be mixtures in there getting against against each other. Because of this, the Napolitan government decided, uh -uh, no, we're not going to have any Frankfurt fans there. Frankfurt, of course, appealed and then uh, this was overturned. However, the Neapolitan government went and I think, uh, or it was in the Minister of the Interior, whatever, whatever. the politician said, and oh, now we're going to uphold this. And in, in, in the end, Frankfurt said, it's so close. We are waiving this for, for, for the tickets. We don't our rights for the tickets, but this needs to be addressed. And then even Jefferin uh, spoke up and said, you know, this cannot be, uh, if we cannot have away fans uh, because of, of the government, then the game will not be played there. And I think so far, so good at this point, I think uh, Frankfurt actually won the court of public opinion um, because, you know, just because hooligans or ultra groups, rival ultra, ultra groups want to fight, it will not stop them if there are no tickets given out because they still can travel. And that's exactly what happened. We had uh, already on the day before uh, Frankfurt fans reported that they have been uh, sidelined by Napoli fans and kind of threatened and all that kind of stuff. 
but it really exploded uh, then uh, just in the run-up to, to the game when ultra groups from Frankfurt and from At Atalanta laid waste to kind of the inner city, putting a police car on fire and so on and, and so forth. As I said, what I do not like is that mostly in the media this is portrayed as German fans going in there. They, uh, they, they, this, this, this twinning aspect is the one thing that is overlooked. That is what has to be uh, uh, clearly look, look at. Those people are out, 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 out for trouble and they are not fans of, of the team. They are ultras that wanna actually look for a fight. That's how I personally see it. And they would have been there whether they have tickets or not. In the stadium then it was really, re, re, relatively quiet. But I think this is uh, one of those things where even if UEFA and probably UEFA will not do any, anything because nothing happened in the stadium. But this is an aspect of the game that needs to be looked at much closer and a little bit more uh, in detail. I also think it didn't help that Atalanta just played that weekend in Naples. So, you know, twinning. That's where I want to get, 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 get in. I really want to, uh, you know, of course, I don't want to see this. But I think it's fast. It's in a way... Fascinating and very interesting to look at and to, to see all this, those dynamics and um, I did not do a deep dive but this needs to be reported a lot more properly and not just say those are um, subhumans that are just out for out of right there is more behind it for sure okay Let's uh, talk about the games. You know, I really cannot talk all, 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 all much except for the one thing City Leipzig. City were completely dominant from the beginning. However, uh, it has to be said that the first two goals and then another, uh, an, a, another action, the referee was definitely not for Leipzig. The penalty that gave uh, City the lead through Holland was such a ridiculous penalty where, uh, yes, it probably touches hand, Hendrik's arm, but he is A, not, not seeing his B, he's jumping. Of course you have the hands up because this is the natural position. I want that this is revised. It cannot be, yes, you could be, but if you have a natural movement, yes, the arm is, this is not an increasing of, of, of the body surface, an increasing of body surface. If you see a shot, you block it and you make yourself bigger. That's what it is. Not in a jumping motion. This is that they have got this so wrong. This needs to be addressed. I, I'm literally trying, especially if you are jumping and from behind. No one in their right mind is thinking about doing this to block a shot. And what's even more is it brushes the arm. The ball doesn't even change direction. It was so hard to see, and then he gives a penalty. This was never a penalty. Yes, by the letter of the law, this is probably all right. This is where it's gone wrong. So, hold on the first one. The second one, um, it could definitely be argued that in the build-up to the, sec the, the second goal, uh, that Holland first fouls the goalkeeper. It goes out and then comes back via De Bruyne to Holland. Uh, the Bruyne takes a shot, goes off the crossbar, Holland heads it in. But uh, there was a little contact in there. I think it's probably all right to let it go, but I think other referees would have um, called the play that there too. So just wanted to have that mentioned. And then uh, when, uh, <laughs> when Ederson comes out, no foul given. You know, it it all didn't go well. When Holland then makes it three just before for the half, the game was done, done, done and dusted. Yes, you cannot allow yourself to run into such a destruction. But Gundogan uh, and Holland uh, two two more, and it was six in the in the fifty seventh already, and then uh, very late on De Bruyne gets his goal as well. Of course, everyone celebrated Holland. It was probably a little bit funny that he was uh, taking off uh, before the end of the. Game, I think in the 63rd, you know, six, six minutes, five, five goals. How many could he have scored? On the other side, uh, you know, the game was dead. Save him. I think that was all fine. Porto Inter. That was the game that, of all the other games, that I was actually most up for. Beautiful jer jersey matchup. Those yellow Inter jerseys actually look quite the, the part, I gotta say. However, Inter just kept it tight and Porto didn't have the means. Yes, there was Uribe trying uh, twice with some um, great shots, you know, from the second row. 
uh, to get a shot, shot and goal. Uh, but I think if there was a team that had even a teeny bit more chances, it was more Inter than it was Porto. Porto woke up too late and it was only then in stoppage time when in one action uh, a header by Taremi hits the post and then I, I, I think it was Grujic with, with a, a shot that came from that uh, post hits the crossbar. That was that. And then Pepe gets sent off, not the old one but the young one. Ah, uh, it was Inter Cruz. It, was more or less intercruising into the next round. Yes, it can. Ha it could have happened if Porto scores a goal. The proper Porto would, would, would have gone through, but it looked overall comfortable for Inter, like it looked comfortable for Milan at Spurs. And that was rather uh, amazing because I think the Porto and I'm, nah, I shouldn't say that Porto have not had the greatest of forms as of late. Napoli, um, Frankfurt came out all guns blazing without creating chances that's a hard thing to do but they uh pressed Na napoli high but Na Na napoli are an excellent team i realized today they only need five more wins to win the title so actually they could take the bonus champ champions league as well you could focus on both of these which is amazing to say and Napoli are a really good team. They are a really deep team. And also, I mean, the one thing that has to be appreciated with Napoli, they have slashed their wage bill. And are among the best teams in Europe at, at, at the moment. As I said, Frankfurt did what they had to do. They didn't create any, any chances. And once Napoli got, uh, got, got it settled down and, you know, played past themselves through, through the press, they could also then create chances. And then uh, probably the moment of the evening, if not of the last two evenings, I think this, this to me was my favorite goal when Politano cross. It's probably too high, but Osiman jumps and he stands in the air like Michael Jordan. I think this uh, to, 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 to be a super impressive hang time and hits it right on, on, on the top. It looks like it, it, it's not a power, powerful header, but he's high enough, puts his head there. And it's 1-0 Nap Napoli. Right after the half, Dil Di Lorenzo cross in Osiman. Taps it in from a short distance, injures himself a little bit on, on the hand on the Zielinski penalty, and that's that. Don't need to say more. Napoli go through, have to be considered among the favorites at this point in time. They're yeah, absolutely flying and flying high. Um, but you know, it also depends very much on the draw, how far, 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 far they will go. And also, it's a little bit rare, rare if they're winning against Liverpool uh, in the groups. It was really, really impressive. But then when we see how Liverpool are at the moment, maybe not so much. Because, you know, what Frankfurt did against Napoli, Liverpool did not do. And I think it was just a walk in the park for Real Madrid. I think both teams didn't really want to play that game. That's the, uh, that's the impression I got from this entire game. That this was probably, of all the four games, this was the least watchable one and then Benzema and uh, the goal was uh, 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 symptomatic for the whole whole game where Vinicius Jr actually he is on the ball he fall, falls over but then has the presence of mind while stumbling to pull it over to ben Benzema who puts it into the net uh, then a late penalty goal but overall not a great game and yeah Real Madrid are not really uh, in great form today Liverpool are so and so we know 7-0, but other than that, not so great. Um, and, you know, Classico is coming out. Although Classico also does me much. And as far as I know, Liverpool don't have a match this weekend, so they go in an early break. But, you know, they have internationals coming up. So with all that, let's look at the pots for the draw. Draw will happen tomorrow at lunchtime. I will probably do a dedicated video to react to the draw. Uh, we have... Uh, in this is the order they were they came in from the previous draw. We have City, Benfica, Real Madrid, Milan, Napoli, Chelsea, Inter, and Bayern. Most remarkably, here is we have three Italian teams. That hasn't happened in a long, 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 long time. I think it's sounds something like 15 years or so. Uh, that's a remarkable rise for Serie A, who have been really good. And the theory behind that is, of course. Because Napoli is so far, far away, none of the other teams are really concerned at themselves as much with Serie A that they actually can focus on Europe. And that shows. Uh, it's a great performance. We already saw it in the Europa League. 
uh, of course, except for Napoli, the other two, the Milan teams, are not favorites at all. I would actually say that they are probably the two worst teams left in the draw, which hurts a little bit to say as a Milan fan. We have two English teams, which is rather little. With City and Chelsea, there's only one really good English team in there. I mean, if I look at this, I don't even trust Real Madrid that much. For me, it's, it's all about City and Bayern at this point and potentially Napoli. I don't know quite yet where Napoli is. Um, and that leads us now to the last one. Who are the favorites? And this is all before the draw. We see, of course, Manchester City, Bayern Munich, then Real Madrid and Napoli rather level. Chelsea... Inter, Benfica, and as I said, Milan, probably the weakest team at the moment in there. So yeah, I'll come back to you with my reaction to the draw. If I have to say, as a Milan fan, I know many say, let's have uh, Inter Milan. No, I do not want to have the derby. I actually would rather have Inter play Napoli or something, so, or something, or Milan play. Nah, I don't want Milan play Napoli. Uh, I don't know who I want to have. I'm thinking uh, if Chelsea or Real Madrid, honestly. Because in either case, uh, you have an honorable exit in a way. I don't want to have the derby. Benfica, I think, is a really, that's the overlooked uh, quantity in there. But you know, I wouldn't mind if Milan play Benfica. Let's put it that way. So, but this, uh, this is my uh, my thing. I don't want to have City or Bayern. I definitely don't, don't want to have Inter. I'd rather have Napoli than Inter. That's as much as I'm going to say as a Milan fan. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you soon more about the Champions League and other things. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!